Zeta. School does come first, Montague. Yes, yeah, school does come first. One of the benefits or, or negatives to me, teaching students a lot. Oh, it says, let's go, let's go. What am I waiting on? Um, is, is that, you know, I'm going to push you to get your schoolwork done. It's, it's more important. All right, guys, I don't think my screen is getting too busy. Let me know if you do, if you think so. Uh, but right now it looks, I think it looks pretty good. We've got, um, we've got different things up here, but I got my logos. I got my streamers team logo. I got my first chatter. I got my cat. Plan on keeping the cat. Uh, so hopefully. I'm doing great, my friend. I'm doing great. Okay, so we are here with Patroclus or Patrick513. And he, because he's a subscriber, he can get lessons. And he was aggressive and said, hey, I want another lesson. And his subscription is not up. So we're doing a second lesson. You guys can do that too. Like Montague is a subscriber now. Montague, you can get a lesson if you want one. All right. So um, I usually ask you to introduce yourself, but we just did that like about two two weeks ago. So rather than yep. just tell us your basics, Patrick, uh, where do you feel you are today in your chess journey? And where is your destination? What are you What are you shooting for in the long run? Uh, uh, the long run is to at least be competitive in like local over the board tournaments. Um, preferably, I guess, like over the board radio, I'd like to get to like seventeen hundred because you're probably in the top like eighty something percentile at that point. Um, as far as my journey goes, I'm. I have a lot. I think I struggle a lot with knowing a lot of information. I think a lot of people struggle with the idea of knowing a lot of information, but knowing what's the most important thing to pay attention to at the time, or like what principle to implement. Um, as far as online rating goes, if you're if you're just going off rating, I know I know we've talked before about rating doesn't necessarily know how strong or doesn't necessarily say how strong you are. Um, so I, I think I've improved a lot as far as strength and understanding positions are being able to break them down. I think a lot of it's then being able to execute the right game plans or the like plans of attack and to not, I think, I, I think one of my biggest weaknesses is, uh, is, and I think a lot of people struggle too with pushing your own agenda and not paying attention, playing hope chess. That's what I say, right? <laughs> like, well, you'll, you'll try to push your plan through without ever thinking of how your opponent's going to stop this and, Ultimately, that's the hardest the hardest thing on the chessboard is the opponent, right? Yep. Oh, uh, yes, totally. All right. And so I like it. Uh, over the board, competitive, which you deem as about 1,700. That would be very competitive over the board. 1,400 is pretty good over the board. Um, I like 1,700. That's, that's, a, that's a high mark to push for, so that's fine. Um, and I like it that we're talking about over the board versus online. The online reading really doesn't mean much. Eh, over the board doesn't mean as much either, but it can be a good measure of your growth and, and how you're doing. Yeah. Uh, let's see, is it lessons? Agreed. I think it's lessons. Uh, maybe it's lesson. It is lesson, not lessons. Ah, oh well. All right. So thank you for sharing, Patrick. We're going to get right to it. We have three games to review, and after we're done with the review, we want to then get involved with uh, looking at specific things that picking one or two things for you to work on for the next week or so. I, I like you to work on one or two things, focus on it for a while, and then I uh, and I don't want to give you more than two. Right? Two, two is too many sometimes. Do you, remember, do you remember what we gave you last time? Hey, Chess Wizard. Uh, so last time we were focusing on what's what's it attacking and what's it no longer attacking okay good so how the position changed and i remember that we wanted you to think about squares not pieces pieces yep all right so i will warn you that when i usually review games i can't help myself hey busy but share extra information with you so chances are even though i'm only going to try to give you we're going to end up with one or two things to work on today um, we're, you're going to see that I, I'll probably be giving you a lot of feedback. Um, but we're going to find one or two to focus on for your improvement, but I can't not help you understand different things that I see. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, so I asked Patrick, and one of the things I will tell you guys that you can do also, I like it if you create a study, and I, I usually create a study for a lesson, but any of you, you could create a study, put your games into it, 
Do your own analysis, not using the computer. I do not want to see computer analysis. I want to see your analysis. And by that, I want to see, I don't want to see moves. Analysis is not you saying, oh, if I had done this, this, and this, and this, and this could have happened. Oh, here's an alternate move. Here's an alternate move. All those type of things we're talking about. Hey there, Sky Knight. You're going to have to remind me where I know you from, Sky Knight, because you're calling me Mr. K. So that sounds like you're in one of my classes. Um, hey, Noah, how are you? Excellent, my friend. Uh, you need to play in that you, you missed, you know, you missed the candidates and then you didn't play in the last qualifier. But hey, good to see you, Noah. All right. So um, I was saying, if I remember what I was about saying. About re reviewing games. Yeah. So when you review a game, I want you to, to not just talk about moves. Uh, that you should do during the game. You should do that during the game, right? You should, A, Sudakus, you should, during a game, be thinking about three candidate moves. Guys, we've talked about three candidate moves. You can have four, you can have five, you can have two. But three is that sweet spot that we try to do. And by candidate moves, we mean finding three good moves to choose from. And it fits right in with the old adage, if you find a good move, look for a better one, right? Because you don't want to stop when you see the first good move. Now, playing fast online, playing blitz, playing bullet, all of those train you not to look for three candidate moves. They train you to spot good moves quickly and play them regardless if they're the best move. But chess, the beauty of chess, especially over the board chess, classical chess, is where you want to take your time and find the best move. I mean, you will hear many people, many masters, many grandmasters say, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm looking for the best move. I'm looking for the right move in this situation, but the best move. Uh, so we want to find at least three candidate moves. So I don't need you to do that in your analysis. I don't need you to identify, and that's what the computer does. I don't want to see that, oh, I should have played bishop to here. That was my mistake. No, that isn't what I want to see at all. I want to see you go through the principles and concepts, especially if we've taught you them, make comments about your game, and share those comments so that I understand what you're thinking and how you're thinking. I can't help you adjust your thinking process if I don't know what it is. Make sense? All right, you're dragging me to a different game, Patrick. All right, let's start oh, with- sorry. That's okay, we're gonna start with your loss against uh, Marcy88. And we're just gonna go through the game and guys, I'm going to read to you Patrick's uh, comments and then I'm gonna make some comments and we'll see how that game goes. But Patrick did a great job of going through his game and making comments for me to give me insights. Now, I'm going to also help him with that because this is the first time he ever did that. So I need to go through the game with him a little bit and see how he's making those comments. All right. So we get um, pawn to queen four. And here I am. I'm back to like old standard because I've been doing this thousand best short games of chess, which is an old English notation. Uh, so I'll try to get back to your uh, algebraic that most people are used to. Hey, Busy gave out five community subs. Busy, you're the best, man. That is so nice. So Ratchet, Sai, uh, ZP, Lauren, and Sly just all got a gift sub from Busy. Thank you so much, Busy. Oh, that, that's very kind of you. All right. That is very kind of you. All right, um, oh, and, and by the way, I even have this one busy. Anyway, so let's go through this game. Pawn to e, uh, d4, d5, and we get this e4. And you wrote, um, taking was the second option. I struggle on if the taking is good in these positions. So my first question to you is because it says plural. How often do you get into this position? I don't know. I, th I feel like under under lower levels, you see a lot of weird like gambit lines that people try to play or sidelines. Wow, this because this is this would be about the weirdest I've seen. So I do have a general rule for you about taking offered gambits. So general rules and principles is what I work off of. I try. I, I don't believe in teaching you memorization, right? Especially not moves, um, but principles and concepts. So my rule is if someone offers you free candy, you take it unless you can see how it's going to kill you. <laughs> so we don't want poison candy, but if we can't see that that's po a poison pawn, we take it. 
And then if we find out that, oh my goodness, look what happened, he destroyed me, that's fine. Then we go and review that and look at that game later, right? We could say, wow, that's interesting. I might even use that someday. But nine out of 10 times, it's gonna be just a bad move. And you should take advantage of it. So you take the free candy. So in this case, I definitely would have just taken the free candy. One, he can't take back right away. Two, it keeps his knight off of his best square. F3. It opens your queen. I, I'm like, yeah, and if he wants to push F3, I take that one too, because then it destroys the king's side. And then I end up with a pawn in my pocket, and I don't care that his knight gets developed. He's still not developing faster than me, because now I can just develop my knight. I don't even have to worry about pushing on my knight. And I, I'm, I'm happy to give him, all he would have an advantage of is a center pawn, right? So, if, I mean, if this was the ridiculousness that went on, the only advantage he has is this center pawn. And I'd be like, okay, keep, yeah, you can have that advantage, my friend. And we'd play this game, I'd play this game out happily. This is weak. This is out here by itself. Yeah, but, you know, I got a center pawn. You have one center pawn. I just got a free pawn. And you didn't, usually when you gambit a pawn, it's so that you can develop quickly. Sometimes you develop quickly by attacking your enemy's extra pawn and then he tries to defend it and you just keep developing while you're attacking. And the idea is that you'll be like two, at least two pieces ahead in development. One pawn is worth two pieces in the race of developing for faster. But this, he's not even ahead. I mean, this is the same advantage he had at the beginning of the game. So, so yeah, um, general rule, if you can't see why the pawn is poisoned, take it so i had asked you when you said um you know you should consider taking lines uh you didn't know if you should take i asked you how do you decide how do you decide if you should take is it because you're trying to memorize theory and you like the the theory or is there something else that you're using to decide if you should take I, personally it's usually i feel if you're playing gambit lines you're planning on the opponent accepting and then I try to get into more solid structures to play more positional. But okay. know, personally, I try to get into safer, safer structures and try and not take that gambit. From people. Okay. They're, they're expecting you usually. They usually have a pet line they're ready for when they yep. play gambits. Yep. And so I'm back to it though. Uh, it could be a pet line. I'd say prove it to me. Right. Okay. Even if I, you think of it this way, if you're playing a uh, IM, we don't even go up to GM level, right? You're playing an IM or a national master or somebody that's 2,500 and they play this, you're gonna be thinking, he's gonna crush me, right? He knows this theory. Everybody in chat's telling me it's called the Black Mar Demer Gambit. It's Black Mar, yeah. Okay, and uh, I don't care, <laughs> but yeah. But you know, so yeah, if you're playing somebody 2500 and you, and you play into this line, you're probably thinking I'm gonna get crushed, right? Okay, so if you don't play into it, you're gonna get crushed. You might as well play into it and see why it's supposed to be dangerous. Make them show you. And if you're playing anybody else at your rating or below, or even 100 or 200 points above your rating, I'd be like, prove it to me. Prove it to me. Uh, so as an example, I, um, I play against uh, Sudakus every once in a while, who's on stream uh, lurking, and he's been playing some gambit against the French defense. Right? And I know he's like, somebody, he's looked it up, somebody's shown him this gambit against the French defense. Do you think I accept it or decline it? I accept it every time because he doesn't know all of the lines he knows maybe one or two lines and I just I just play into it and I'm like yeah prove it I can't my, my general rule is prove it to me prove it to me because it's not gonna win all on its own hey Flavio thank you for the subscription eight months now oh my goodness guys hey where is my uh, where now something's I would think I'm supposed to be seeing some uh, where is my, what do you call it? Where's my bot? Where's my Streamlabs bot? It's supposed to be doing, uh, you know, telling me things like alerts. Yeah, where's my alerts? Where's my alerts? Okay, that's gonna bother me if my alerts are off for some reason. I don't know why my alerts are off. Oh, let me check my stream. Let me just see if I have it somehow it's not on. No, nope, sound alerts are on hmm my alerts seem to be all should be on i don't know why my alert didn't work okay we're gonna have to wait 
see if somebody follows or something. Maybe it just doesn't have community gift subs and but you just resubscribed on a normal that should have given me a beautiful sound effect and picture for superheroes. I'm really sorry. I'm gonna have to fix my alerts. Thank you again for the subscription. All right. We're doing a side hustle chess wizard? Oh, okay. So yeah, prove prove it. Make them make them prove the gambit. Okay. But um by the way, here you said, uh, let's go back. Okay, how do you decide? Okay, good. Okay, okay. Then we went to here and uh, knight to f6. And you said, before making this move, I knew we could transpose to a French structure. Just for clarity, you're in a French structure right now. I, I should have I said advanced, like the advanced line. Advanced, or advanced, yep. Or he could have played the exchange still. Yeah, I mean, you still. I mean, right now you're just in the first two you're moves in a of the French, French right now. Yeah, you can yeah. play. It could be. It could be any version of the French, uh, still to go. I mean, yeah, you're. As soon as you do this, you're in the French, especially with this. Okay, so it's a French. I just, just curious. That didn't. Uh, that was nothing wrong with that. All right, boom, boom, boom. All right. I rarely, but I did this time. I told you, yeah, you might want to check theory for the French because I'm not used to this for the French at all. Yeah, usually. C5, uh, you can even do an early F6, but when you do the early F6, usually your bishop is still here. There's no reason to put it here usually, but that's okay. That's okay. The reason why I don't care about you memorizing openings, although you can go look up the theory and say, oh yeah, normally I should have done C5. I'll try that next time. That type of attitude, I'll try that next time is what I like to hear. What I don't want you doing is, uh, like a lot of people do, sit there and they think that uh, Hikaru Nakamura are going, okay, what was that move on move 15 that I was supposed to play to win this game? You know, you don't want that, right? You, you don't want that. Uh, so, mostly I want you to understand the principle and the concept behind a specific opening that you're playing. So if you're playing the French, you, you, know, you normally know this is a bad bishop, it's a hard one to get sure, out. Yeah. But you know also that you usually hit at the center with c5. Your job is to break the center up. So if you could take this pawn at any time, even if he takes back, that's one less pawn protecting this pawn, so that makes this pawn weaker. Okay. All right, enough enough theory. Um, all right, moving along. Uh, bishop to f4, c5, queen to d2. The bishop, now you say the position is closed. The pawn, uh, the b2 pawn is, uh, the position is closed. b2 pawn is currently weak b2 pawn and um also if we can trade light square bishops it is better for me so at this moment totally agree position is closed because what defines a closed position these these four pawns being locked or these pawns being locked together right here okay what happens if those four pawns were locked and there were no other pawns on the board would it be closed or open well as long as as long as it's black we'll we actually get into it as long as black still has these two pawns right here it's closed okay so so if as long as you have a pawn locked in the center right right here at least one that's okay. considered like semi-closed or closed so you so if all these pawns are gone and all of these pawns are gone Okay, all those that I just marked, let's say they're all gone. Trade it off. Open or close? Yep. Uh, I would say close still with the pawns currently in the center. Okay, I, I would say open. I define the position as close to open based on the open diagonals and files. How okay. many open diagonals and files do I have? But I, I, I understand your definition and I'm okay with it. I'm totally okay with it. Uh, it's just, yeah. you have to decide what does that mean to you though. So when you say closed position, how does that help you make any decisions? Well, so when it's closed, you're typically gonna have knights are going to be stronger. Okay, and, because? And you, you, you can get away with slower development typically because the attacks won't come as quickly. Okay. So you can good. play a little more pos positional essentially. You okay, can build good. up slowly. So if all these pawns are gone, I think I think you can't play very slow because you're gonna have a lot of open lines of attack, right? But right. I'm still okay with it because they can't go through the most critical part, which is the middle, which is why it's important for you to control the middle so that you can have your traffic go from here to here faster. Okay, okay. Um, so one knight could be a little better because the position is closed and they're better be because they're closed because they can jump over the pieces, right? Pieces. Yep. Okay, and they can change colors, right? Okay. Um, how about bishops? Do bishops like closed positions or open positions? They like open. 
because they could travel. That's why they're stronger. Into... That's why they're stronger in the end game, typically, right? Okay. Like everybody talks about the bishop pair, but the power rises in the end game, not in the not in the middle game. Excellent, because those because uh, of those open lines. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Okay, um, but now now you gotta. So you sold me on this. Gonna keep this as calling it closed, no matter how many pawns are missing. I'm okay. I'm gonna live with that. Now, now you got to do a little harder sell though to get me to understand why this pawn is weak. Well, it's the only backwards pawn at the second. I guess that can't. It's not protected by a piece. Can it can't. Define... It can be. It can become strong with a push, right? But you can. I guess I look at it like if you play here, you're forcing White to say, "Hey, do I want to? I'm going to push and defend this pawn." Okay. So, um, language is extremely important, right? I mean, in any in any communications language and when I, when I had an interview with thinker teacher and he's from Poland and he didn't always understand like some of the nuances of the the phrases that people were using so he had to ask and we had to explain and that made sense so I believe language is extremely important to communicating well and for me coaching wise I've got to communicate that's like a critical thing is that I have to be able to communicate with your ideas so when you say this pawn is weak right and you said I could push it and it would become strong. Can I? Not strong. It'd be defended by pawns. I should it say. It would be defended. It would be defended. Let's say can can we um let's say for argument's sake that pawn was pushed. Tell me okay. if there's any weak pawns after that. So, so the weak pawns are now A okay. and C, and then the dark squares. Okay. So. I'm gonna ask you about a different way of looking at it. Okay. Pawns, pawns and pieces are never weak. Pawns or pieces can be undefended. They could be poorly developed, they could be developed well. But when you're saying undefended about this pawn, what you're really saying is it's undefended. At least that's what I'm hearing. It's the only piece on the board right now besides this rook, which by the way, you could also identify the rook it's, and it's undefended. this rook. Most rooks start off as undefended. It's one of the rare pieces that are undefended at the beginning of the game. So yeah, these are undefended pieces and pawns. So, so for, your, for your vocabulary, are you saying weak pawns and is like more towards end game when you have less pieces and you have doubled pawns or isolated pawns? Okay, second part is, uh, I'm going to help you out. The second part is, right. I don't want to think of pawns as weak at all. I want to think of the square as weak. Okay. So if this pawn is here, so let's just do the next move, and let's say this move. Which I, I, that wasn't a move in the game, but let's say this move. You're, I would say you're incorrect that these pawns are weak. They're not weak. They, they're a pawn. They haven't moved. If, if not moving a pawn makes it weak, then you have eight weaknesses to start the game. This one is protected. This one is protected. They're not even unprotected pieces, pawns. This pawn, as you said, went from being unprotected, remember, not weak, unprotected to being protected. protected. But by moving that pawn every time, and this is, the, this is what you'll hear most times, every time you move a pawn, you are <clears throat> normally, you have the potential to make a weak square. Hey, that alert worked. Grr. And, and it's Flavio just resubscribing. It just now worked. Flavio, that has got to be the longest delay on, a, on an alert I've ever seen. So, every time you move a pawn, because they can't go backwards, you have the potential to make weak squares. Before you push that pawn, you had no weak squares back here. They were all attacked by a pawn. Now you have two squares that are not attacked and can't be you can never attack this square or this square with a pawn. And that's the simple definition of a weak square is a square that I cannot attack or protect with a pawn. And it's about, we're back to what we did in our first lesson. I want you to think about squares, not pieces. Pieces, yeah. So these are weak squares, which means I can plop a bishop here. I can try to get a knight here. I can wedge a pawn in here. I can wedge a pawn in here. And it's and that pawn. If I could, let's say I could put a pawn here and a pawn here, right? If I put two pawns here, you you're never gonna take this pawn because you don't have any pawns to take it with. And if you take it with anything else, you're gonna lose a piece. 
right? So if I can put a pawn in here, protect it with a pawn, and let's say this pawn has been traded, and if not, let's say I have a pawn here, right? So I have, I have a nice pawn chain. Well, that pawn chain is ending at a square that you can never attack with a pawn. So that square is weak, and I'm gonna occupy your weak squares. Squares. Is one of the things you could do as a plan if you go, where do I put my pieces? Well, he has a weak square, and let me see if I can occupy that weak square. Good? Helpful? It's a start. Yes. It's a start. All right. So that's the reason why I love hearing your thoughts, and that's why I'm glad you wrote what you did, because then we could talk about it and make sure we understand what we mean. So to me, this pawn is not weak. It is undefended. And pushing it would create two weaknesses. All right. So the same idea. This square is not a weak square because I still have a pawn here. This square, if I could get it, let's say I could trade off your minor pieces. Or, you know, and or let's say I trade them all off except for your white bishop, your bad bishop. So we got rid of both knights and the bishop. And you got my, you got both my bishops and one of my knights. And I can plop my knight in here. Let's say I can end up with a knight there, anchored by a pawn. That's an eternal knight, right? There you go. It's eternal darkness. It's eternal night. So um, it's, worth, it's worth a queen. <laughs> that is Almost. the idea of weak squares. All right. So this square is a, a weak square, and that's why you have to watch that square and not let pieces get into it, because it's a weak square. This square could be weak if I push this pawn. That's a terrible move, positionally. Who knows Who knows tactically what's going on at the time? Positionally, that's a terrible move because this would be a very weak square. Not protected by a pawn making, anymore. You're, you're making an outpost for white. And you can think of them as outposts. They don't always have to be outposts. They're just weak squares. Yep. But squares. I will yep. agree that weak squares make good outposts. That's why I said you want to put something, occupy that weak oh, square. Fine. Weak square. Yeah. Yep. Yep, and if there's a pawn behind it, then you're blockading the pawn also, which means this just gets in everybody's way, right? All right, so concepts, concepts. All right. Oh yeah, it was definitely worth it. Yeah, I was trying to decide. Okay, I get you, chess wizard. All right, um, and you're right. Your light square bishop is your bad bishop. So in the French, based on the principles of the French, if you could trade it off, you usually do, but usually you don't see this kind of formation. But that's okay. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not I'm not telling you, oh, that's not theory. We don't care. We want you to just find good moves, right? We want you to find principled moves. So yeah, that's good. That's fine. Uh was unsure also thought about uh, knight to c6, okay, which is normal. That's also in keeping. Uh queen to c7 is playable, but then he could chase you right away, right? Everybody. Yeah, so if you if you go here and he goes here, you just chase him away because if he comes in here, you're going to trade him off and that pawn's going to be really hard to keep. Um, but, so, here though, you give him tempo. Tempo, yeah. A6, you have to play A6 first. To right, so you can play A6, keeping the knight and the bishop out of here. A6 is much more in keeping with norm, unless you are specifically trying to trade off the bishop, in which case, of course, you have to push this pawn. Um, but yeah, all those are fine. And queen to b6, hitting what you identified as the undefended pawn. That was good too. All right, so you had a lot of candidates. Okay, we opted for this one, which is probably the least common candidate. Probably the least common candidate, unless you're really, really eyeing to get rid of that. So what's wrong with this move that your opponent made? Uh, he's moving the bishop twice. There you go. Simple, I mean... <laughs> Let's not even dilly-dally, right? It's a bad move because he moved it twice. He didn't develop the bishop. He has in castle. By the way, he's almost enticing you to do this. Which is, again, if we know the um, principles and the concepts behind the French, we want to get this pawn because we want to remove this pawn so that the pawn chain is shorter. Right? Because if he takes... You're trying, to, you're trying to undermine the center either here yes. or here. So well, if, here or here, right? Right. If we push here and we get any kind of trading here, after all that trading is done, we're going to be able to take here. We're going to have two center pawns. He's going to have none. All right? Just basic 
like you said, I want the center. And I could get rid of both center pawns. The French would be a very happy French because that's usually your problem is that these two center pawns stay here a long time. And you know it, and that's part of the game is to attack that center pawns, but... Yeah, you're playing with less space. Yep. Essentially, you're, you're giving it up to try and undermine it later. Yep. And... For a solid position. Right, exactly. All right. Oh, winning a pawn is always good, Ratchet. We want to do that. All right, so um, you said you considered castling here as well. I like castling here as well. That is fine. I personally do not want to trade on his terms. At least let it develop my queen off the back rank. So if he takes, the new queen gets off the back rank. Yep, I agree with it. I do like, I would like this though, probably, as an option. Um, yeah, I think Ratchet's thinking that you could play. Oh, no, he's thinking of other things also. Uh, but you could play here because, you know, and if he takes here, you're fine because you, and I think that is what happens in the game to a degree. You also get this move in. Uh, Ratchet, I don't know what you're thinking. So Ratchet said, uh, oh, okay. Ratchet is saying Bishop takes G5 um, and the D4 pawn will hang. Hang, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which I think is something like what happened in the game. So you took the D4 pawn right away. Bishop takes, you take back, and then he takes with the queen. So you didn't get to win. So Ratchet is saying, and, and again, this is tactics, right? And this is, by the way, this is not what I'm asking you to do when you analyze your game. So you did fine. You did what I wanted. Um, this would just be tactics saying, hey, did I have something better? Well, yeah, maybe I had something better, which by the way, the computer, the computer won't miss showing you this, right? If you take with the queen, queen takes, and then um, the pawn still, uh, the knight has to take back, and then the pawn drops. And if he takes with the knight first, you just take because, if, of course, if he takes here, he loses the knight. So tactically, you had a forced, you could force the win of a pawn. And just to check it, you could say this pawn is attacked once, defended twice. Nice. If I take here, I'm gonna remove one of the defenders. So I removed one of the defenders. Now it's defended once. But this queen is defending the pawn and the knight. Do you know what that's called? Overwork. Yes. Overworking the queen. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, we gotta give you, we gotta, I don't have um, master points like they did in the movie. Um, Tristan and Bob and Tristan, but we do have applause we can give you. So yes, it's overworked, which means that I can win something, right? So I can take that pawn, he can't take back because he'd lose the knife. Okay, so free pawn. But again, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm okay with that because I want to hear what you're thinking about otherwise. All right, so you said you'd rather him take on your terms, but you always do want to look whenever you're attacked and you're attacked, we talked about what can you do. You can attack something else. You can attack, uh, you can take the piece. You can interpose a piece. You could run away. We're not going to run the bishop away. That'd be a bad idea. Um, or you could defend it, right? So you could defend it again, right? You could say, I'm going to just keep, I'm going to pile up on my bishop. Uh, but there was a distinct advantage of chess taking. Yeah. By the way, Ratchet... It's really I can... like your, your forcing moves or those two moves, right? Yeah, because I can still see problems moves. with this now for you. Because now he's threatening to win the pawn. And so you probably say, no, no, say, yeah. I'll protect the pawn. And he'll say, great, I get, look at, the, remember we talked about this being a great square. And yes, you know, how long can you stay there? But for now you're there. And it could be annoying. <laughs> and even if you just take here next, you know, you're not castling anymore. Oh, by the way, this pawn is hanging. Right? Yeah, so, so, yeah, it looks like you do win a pawn, but if you're playing a nice, really long classical game, you could have went through that whole scenario's black and said you take the pawn, and then you say, okay, but now what do I do? He's going to win the pawn back, so you didn't win anything. You're threatening this pawn. I guess you could take this pawn, so you can't get in here. So you, you won one pawn, he gets one back. And you still can't take with the queen. Yeah, because it loses the knight. Yeah, yeah. It's still defending. But it just shows you how much fun these. Ga this game is like not dumb, right? I mean, there's so you're still down a pawn, and it's going to be an interesting game. 
It's going to be an interesting game. You know, White's only uh, down one pawn, and he's got three pieces to develop while you have one. And your queen doesn't have any quick development. And a, and a, ba and a bad bishop. And a bad bishop that you can still try to get rid of, at least. Try to yeah. But, yeah, so it's still going to be an interesting game. All right. So, again, I, that's why I'm not asking you to do, oh, if I did this, he did this, I did this. Nah. That's in-game I want you to do. Out of game, I want you to do just what you're doing, which is talking about how the game changes and what you were thinking and why you did certain moves, because then I can help. All right, I ended up taking, um, knowing I gained a tempo with queen takes d4, because you're gonna chase him away with the knight, very good. So that's called developing with tempo, right? Giving yourself uh, tempos for your development and critical to develop always. Um, I gain a temple with queen takes d4. I most likely win the pawn on e4 eventually, yes. Uh, this gives us complete center control. Uh, complete center occupation, totally agree. Occupation, yeah. Yeah, because you, you you could have center pawns and not have control of the center if his pieces were controlling the squares. But definitely, I mean, it's you have center occupation is very good. Uh, we have the better pawn center. Yep, only pawn center probably if you take. Uh, plus two attackers on the e5 pawn. Okay, we can castle and play f6 at some point. Yes, bring the rook into the game. And uh, breaking white, having any pawns in the center. Very good. Uh, okay, good. Uh, queen to d1. Okay, what do you think about that move? Well, I mean, he's stopping him. He's ruined his castle queen side if that's what he's trying to do. There he's also moved the queen, what, three, three tempos now? Yes, and, and he's moving it. And he's, and he's moving it backwards, like a at least worst second worst case scenario. Where where can you move it forward somewhere right. on this rank? Yep, and right. he, and he stopped defending the pawn twice. Yep. You have two attacking it, and now he's only defending it once. So yeah, that was a terrible move. Blocked his ability to castle. Blocked the rook coming out. Right. He undeveloped the queen basically. I mean, he could have went to. Here, he could have went to here, 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 you know, almost anywhere. Do you want to say here? I kind of like because at least he's here, trying to hold on. Except, actually, he could get away with that for the moment. Hey there, buddy. How are you? There you go. You, <laughs> he, he was saying hi to the internet. Nice, saying nice to the whole world out there. <laughs> yes, Ratchet. Now you can get another lesson. You got a, a subscription thanks to Busy. So yeah, so you know, you could, you know, it would be interesting, right? You could say, well, can he do that? Again, you'd have to calculate all those things because you'd say, but I can push. But then, then push. he gets to take. But then this pawn drops because I still have two and you only have one because I removed a defender again. Under. Right? So you can, yeah, this would be the fun that you'd be going through deciding, do I want to do this move? Don't I want to do this move? How do I want to make it work? Uh, by the way, I can't get rid of that bishop anymore because... Um, I, my knight is no longer protecting that square. So interesting, very interesting, all the things that are going to be happening in this game. But anyway, all right. So I don't like it because, yes, he undeveloped it, blocked his rook in, and basically said, okay, I had three pieces developed, now I have two. I mean, that rarely happens. So you took the candy, always nice taking the candy, and he pins your knight. Right? What do you feel? What do you think about that? I mean, well, let's see. You said castle seemed like the safest move here. Okay. And let white continue to trade with us. This trade should help black, giving us a bishop for the end game. Also gets us out of the pin if he, by castling and gets us closer to being fully developed. Good. I agree. But what else do you, what, do you So one candidate move definitely is castling. Do you have any other candidate moves? Like could, uh, I guess you could have tried to force him to trade with a6. Okay, you could say, yeah. Test, test the bishop. Test the bishop at that point. Okay. Okay. And, um, but now if he takes here, you have to take his bishop and double up your pawns. And you can think of it this way. Double pawns is almost as bad as having no pawns. Okay. And can you even do that? I mean, if, if he takes, can you take the bishop without losing another piece? Nope. No. So you can't put the question to the bishop. You got to deal with this right now um, because this piece is undefended. This piece I guess here. is undefended. Yeah, you could do that. 
or you can, because this piece is undefended, you could take. Take, yeah. And now you can defend the, bitch, the knight. And, uh, you know, you gotta decide, but this way actually gives you a little <clears throat> bit of uh, activity on the fact of a long alignment later, but this breaks the pin. Yeah, what that. But seeing as how you're going to probably castle pretty soon anyway, you probably don't have to worry about the pin. But those those would be candy moves. Okay. I like um, here. I like here because then you can push that pawn. At okay. That point. All right. All right. You got that alignment if you need. But castling is fine. All this is good, right? Life is good here. Um, and so you're you're winning. And if you were to, and I believe you do it after this move, you actually assess the position and decide on a plan, which is excellent. Because normally you want to do it when you either finish developing or one move away from finish developing. So now you're one move away from finish developing, and the benefit of making a plan on this move, instead of waiting till you finish developing, which is getting the queen off the back rank, is that you might decide where you want to put the queen based on that plan. I mean, the bishop. You might decide where you want to put the bishop based on whatever plan you come up with. It might tell you where to put the bishop. But other than that, yeah, that's fine to develop first and then, and then go on with your plan. So you had queen to b4 was a thought for me here as well. Oh, you know, yeah, because that undefended pawn, sure, uh, was a thought for me. It is a one-move attack. Don't know that you'll get anything else after that. But uh, getting the bishop out to a6 puts uh, him on his most active diagonal and stops your opponent from castling. So that's a nice, right? Restricting movement, forcing him to castle queen side. So that's a possibility. And uh, connects and connects your rook. So you finish development, stop him from castling king side. So you'll have opposite side castling if he castles. Um, and it connects your rook. You're fully developed. Yeah. So nice choice, right? Nice way to decide. I like it. I like it a lot. Good job. All right. So now he castles. So now it would be like, we gotta make a plan, right? Yeah. All right, so you did this first before you made your plans. I, I don't know, but at least you didn't write about the plan until then. You said G2 is the weakest point for white. But now we, we, we've had this conversation. Square. Getting back to getting back to weak square, or uh, yeah, a weak square. Yeah, that's, a, that's an undefended pawn. If he puts a rook behind it, your uh, assessment, um, and or this one, because that way you can push both pawns, um, your assessment of that being a weakest point um, is, is no longer a weak point at all, and he doesn't care. He's going to push g2 out of there, right? So that's another reason not to think about this as a weakness, unless it's a square. And why? A, I got to show everybody the principle of the week, because it plays right into the principle of the week. Why do we target and why do we talk about squares instead of pieces? Because squares don't move. Right? If we're targeting this as a weak square, it's going to be there forever. G2 is not moving. But when you say G2, I'm pretty sure you mean that pawn. Yes. Right. And that pawn's going to move. So you're either going to have to say, well, now it's G4 because he moved it, or... <laughs> Right, so our thought should be, no, this is a weak square. If it were a weak square, it would be a weak square forever. That's the way I look at it. Now my bishop is hitting these squares, so one of those squares might be a weak square. And in fact, if this knight and queen weren't there, my bishop holds that square. If I could get a knight here or a rook there, you know, I might be happy. Uh, but that said, this is not a weak square. This is not a weak square, but they are pawns in front of a king so i have a semi-open file lining up at a king he has a semi-open file lining up at my queen i don't have a semi-open file at his queen but i have a semi-open file aiming at somebody's king guess where i want to put rooks in general aligned with my enemy's king in general i could start putting rooks here and he could run away and then I go, oh, my alignment's off now. Now I got to see if I can align this way. Right? So, totally understand. But that's what I'm looking for. Now, your move here, I kind of like because it does align with the queen, which the next best thing to the king to align with is the queen. Now, you said it's because you're you'll be behind your pawns that could push. 
Neither one of these have passed pawns, right? Do you agree? Not yet. Okay, yep. good. Good. They have, they have potential to become a passed pawn. But neither pawn is passed at this moment. Okay. So, you could go behind the pawn, but that it almost says you better be pushing me because if you don't push me, then the rook is ill-placed. Better place would be on the semi or open file. So, if I'm waiting patiently, not going to push these pawns and maybe lose my pawns by overextending them, maybe, then I'm going to put my rooks on my only open file, my semi-open file. I'm going to pile both rooks up, stack them if I can, if I can, get my knight over here too, and I'm just going to put everything I can, you know, on that square. On that square, I said, not on the square. pawn. Yep. On the square. Anyway, so that could be a plan. But yeah, otherwise, I'm fine. Um, with what you did because you are aligned at least with the queen and you said i knew at this point he wasn't sure what to do because he's pushing that h pawn and if he wants to play on the wing we should play in the center that is definitely uh the normal rule of thumb if they play on the wing then counterplay on the wing attack by attacking in the center i'm all for it uh, again by general principle and if i'm patient i probably want to do this first now I have both rooks. I have both rooks looking good, feeling good. And I'm ready. And after I get this rook here, I feel like now I can just start opening up the gates, right? I, I, I can do this. I can do this. I'm going to be able to have some. I'm going to be able to just stream in. I can get my queen here if I want them. I can bring them this way if I want them. I have the bishop already. Here. Ah, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good with this rook move. I think you're totally prepped and ready to go but yeah d4 is fine uh, busy likes d4 too i do too all right so uh rook to c8 knight to a5 with knight to c4 ideas what busy busy what uh Oh, chess kudo you, says, can, you can reroute the knight like this. Chess kudo says rook to c8. Oh, knight to a5. Knight, to, yeah. Yeah, chess kudo. Yeah. That, well, and that's all based on taking advantage of your semi open file, placing your pieces. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right. But anyway, we get d4, which again, I, I, I'm, I'm not complaining. Uh, you did notice and you did mark that you had two undefended pieces at um, earlier very good of noticing your undefended pieces um, and you have to be wary about the fact that they're undefended okay he moves his knight uh, i thought he might have moved it here to attack the pawn but you know comes towards the center okay and i love this 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 was good but this is tactical right i mean you're flat out tactical you're saying you know go ahead and take me because then i just i'm going to take back and you can, you're not going to take with the queen because your queen's in the lead. Agreed? Agree. All right. Now, so... It just seems hard to hold. It seems hard to hold is what I said. Oh, like yeah. Practically totally. speaking, or defending. Like, you're just... You're either letting me open up the king. Yep. Or you're, or you're giving up heavy amounts of material right now. Yep. So, but now what, though? Oh, you're not disturbing chess, Kudo. You guys are supposed to do that. Um, so, but here's something that we all do. I do it, too. We push saying to ourselves, oh, if he takes here, I get, I, I got a queen, right? For a rook or a bishop. If he takes here, I'm just, I could take it with the bishop with a discovered attack on the queen, or I could take with the rook immediately chasing the queen, right? And by the way, yeah. if I take with the bishop, then I'm threatening the knight as well. Yeah, I'm liking this, right? What we don't normally do is think, what happens if he doesn't take? He just pushes here. Yeah, what do you do? I guess first thing I start looking at is the forcing move. So can I hit this knight and where can he go? Okay, so you're gonna start down, working through you're gonna start working through the moves. Okay, and that's fine. Yeah. Um so but nothing jumps out at you as like like oh I I was all prepped for him taking. Now if he doesn't take now that yeah, what's he changes. do? He, bro he kind of broke the pattern, capture, recapture, or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and look how far ahead your pawn is. I, mean, I assume this is just a thorn, even if you don't take. It can be. Right? Like, this could be. This is. These are you're, like nice you're squares. Going to, 
you're going to deal with this being here the whole game it's up for, yeah. for the most part. I think this would be a fun one to play out from this point forward. Then you can start trying to push. Then you can just start trying to push this pawn. Yeah. Yeah, you could. I'm just thinking this would be a fun game to try to finish playing out from this point forward. Because there's yeah, so many weird taking. stuff. Yeah, weird stuff going on. All right. Anyway, uh, he just blithely pushes. By the way, you, you're right. You did not have to react. You could have waited. You could even let him take because then his pawn doesn't go anywhere else. Uh, it just yeah, depends just on the situation. It depends totally on the situation at the time. Uh, but this is fine, right? It just stops it. And he says, okay, well, I'll get my second pawn after you. And he's got enough pieces hitting this square that he's, he's hoping to distract you. So finally you take because you get the discovered attack. Queen takes, and yep, now you have alignment again. So imagine if this rook were already here and all this had happened. Right? Not that he had to let you do it, but imagine if that rook was already here. That could have been yeah, pretty Yeah, maybe sweet. before pushing the second the second deep on move. Yep. But this is nice, right? I mean, so he tries to counterattack, but everything's protected. The knight's protecting the bishop, and the queen is protecting the knight. So again, uh, I, you know, not a great move. How yo, you won this one. All you, you gave me all wins. Okay. So and you had a nice pretty finish here. Just uh, just giving away pieces and then it's like uh, free candy city. That was interesting. So like oh okay no you're good that's right it's not free yet. It's free now. Yeah. All right. All right. Um. But let's go, oh, this is, there was, there's even a moment here where we could do a small teachable moment. So like right now, right now, I don't like here because you have, he only has no moves with his king, right? And so, yeah, you can push a pawn. And if he pushes this pawn and you start going for a queen, you just stale, well, you didn't stalemate him because he could push this pawn. All right, all right, that's fine. Uh, but anyway, there's there's a, a standard rule right here, and that is that I want to keep this king on a back rank if I can with no place to go. So because of this, his king has to go back if you check him. So it's just a standard. Yep, and then, and then walk, walk him back to the. Yep. And what you did first, is fine, right? Rank. What you did is fine. Uh, this, I mean, you're going to win this game. It's not like you have to even think to win this game. But no, yeah. I I want second nature for you to think. Oh wait, I have an opportunity to restrict his king even more. I'm going to just keep restricting his king. So then I'd push. And let's say he would go here. I'd say, okay, I'm going to restrict your king even more. You know, I'm just, I just want to lock your king down. He ain't going anywhere ever. And then he, he could go back here or he can push the pawns and you trade whatever you need to trade. You could bring your queen, king down and checkmate him pretty easily or you can get another piece and checkmate him. So just general rule, if this was a rook or a queen, I want to keep limiting my opponent's squares. That's all. Uh, it's like I said, it's, it's, it's fine. All right. So so far, um, weak squares have been interesting. We've been talking about, um, and then also the idea of making a plan around a square, not a piece. Where that still seems piece. to be yeah. interesting. Okay, this game I thought was ugly. I even called it ugly because it was just like free candy. Uh, it was Halloween. You guys have heard of the Halloween Gambit? This is the Halloween game. Make it as, oh, I like that. Chess Kudos says a pro tip. So I guess he's a pro, and he might be. Um, make it as easy for yourself as possible. And the corollary to that for me is make it as hard as possible for your opponent. And then the corollary to that is don't make it easy for your opponent, which is the one that I see a lot. Free candy, free candy, free candy. A lot of it coming up in this game. So your, I believe your knight got trapped, right? Yes, it did. Yep, yep, yep. And so that's, you know, just not looking. Uh, all you have to do is look two moves ahead. You, yep, you're like I said, I was, I was playing on autopilot and just developed. Yes, <laughs> And I was yes. like, we'll go, we'll go right, right which here. Is and moving, I was like, wait right? a minute. Which is moving. Yep. I can move somewhere. I can move here. I can move anywhere. I can move here. You can't take me. So I'm okay. One move. All I'm looking is one move ahead. Okay. But yeah, we, we of course want to look more than one move ahead. Um, and so now we, we lose that and we lose that and we get, and, and then he decides not to take again. He decides to push on your knight and then take the pawn. Yep. 
and and we get and we get all this going on here what oh and we okay so we gave away a lot of pawns right and I, and it looked like you you were giving away pawns but it's you both have three pawns traded but he did get a piece out of it he did okay. get a piece so, got so far he's up right a piece now. and then he starts making bad moves um so here he's making a one move attack i'm gonna checkmate you um this is undefended unless i'm wrong it's undefended and you can you can do a discovery on him so as far as i can tell he's gonna lose the bishop and you did and by the way this is what the computer is going to tell you because it's the only way to protect the bishop bishop yeah uh, but he does this instead and you say okay i'll just go here check you again and he decides to move the bishop back because he's going to lose the bishop so he thinks hey i'm saving the bishop okay and you and you probably should have just you could have just but then we lose here and then maybe we do this check wow then what i guess he still has to put the knight here the knight yeah yeah i don't know wow i was it's gonna just... say you can block with the queen or the knight right yeah, this gets ugly really fast. Of course, you could take here, because if he takes back with the king, you might not mind his king being out in the middle of the board. I don't know. Anyway, okay, let's let's just go through this. All right, so, hmm. Yeah, yeah I knew I missed this. Yeah, yeah. We... <laughs> Missing this... Uh, the... he, he, missed, he missed it, too. <laughs> this was probably the worst move of the three games. Which is, which is why I said this was an ugly game. Oh, yeah, and then here he lets you take, which, by the way, you could have taken now. But this is check, so, right? It doesn't stop. Um, and he can't take with the king to get out of the pin. So, yeah, I guess you could do an interme intermezzo move and take here. Uh, probably correct is still to take here first, though, because then if he takes here, you just say checkmate. No, you don't. Duh. Never mind. No checkmate. Anyway, yeah, intermezzo is fine. He drops the whole queen. And then you go back and say, no, you can't take my queen because you're pinned. But kind of scary putting your queen in that spot. But okay, he finds a way to protect. We are already living dangerously. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys, you lived about as day. And then he moves his knight again. He still, you know, he can't castle. But my gosh. Oh, this is just. And he's already down the queen. And, and you didn't, of course, you couldn't take because of the back rank mate. Oh, my goodness. Let's grab a pawn. Let's grab another pawn. Being a little greedy, but, you know, you're like, yeah, I can afford to be greedy. Because now he doesn't, he can't, he's not even going to get a back. Oh, this is just an ugly game. Ugly game. Okay. Ugh. Oh, I don't even want to, I, I cannot find anything to help you on that game. Which is not going to look there good. Was, there, was no, there was nothing good in that game. No that redeeming like a, factors that in that was that. was like a 2.30 in the morning game. I should have went to bed. All right. Uh, I like it. The alternative is to play the Russell Limo, bishop to b4, and plan to exchange the bishop. Look at you, knowing your opening theory. I like it. Okay. C takes, D takes, uh, knight to f6. We develop, we develop, d6. Develop, develop. Uh, good. Chase the bishop, even though you weaken your king side. This is maybe one of those exceptions. Uh, we're not going to say never play f3. Uh, because, you know, of course, sometimes you do. Let's see. You wrote, I thought of following up with g4. This is the first time I've read this one. Following up with g4 here. But then what do you do after that, right? Here, and gaining an extra tempo here, but trying to get castled seemed like the better plan. <laughs> and then start to plan an attack. Yay! b7 is a current weak pawn. Well, we're going to start saying that b7 is an undefended like pawn. Undefended pawn. Yeah, I, 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 wrote I still that down, find by it. The way. I'll, I'll... <laughs> I still find it fascinating that we're focusing on this one pawn over here, which yeah, as soon as the bishop left, it was undefended. Why are defended. we thinking yep. about this pawn again? It's like this pawn. It's like these the b7 and b2 pawn are like like you focused on them for some reason. So I don't like this because it totally destroys your king side, unless you're planning on castle and queen side, which by the way he has a semi-open file towards. Um, and and you don't have like you know you don't, you're not going to win the bishop so yeah i don't know if i like you destroying your king side um yet right but you have three pieces developed he has three pieces i would not do that personally but yeah all right planning to take the knight 
to remove the defender. Uh, what? I take the knight and remove an attacker, oh, an attacker of the d5 square. Okay, to give our knight a your lingo. <laughs> okay. No, but this like is fine. Lingo. Right? I mean, you're over, you're yep. over attacking d5. I have no problem with that. Um, hitting the knight, hoping to trade it off, and uh, he can move the knight. He can say, no, I'm not going to do that. But yeah, yeah, okay. And you develop the piece. You know, this might have been a better square. This might have been, I don't know. This is okay. Um, by the way, one of the things he could have done was say, yeah, take. Well, so I thought of that. Like, this was my original developing square I thought of uh -huh. here. And I did know if he ends up playing this pawn move or this pawn move here, like you weaken this, right? Like I can always try to plant this knight in here's kind oh, of yeah. deal. Take and do this. Yep. Then when you're about to say if he plays this a6, I thought you, you can even comment on this. You have this exit, which is essentially here, and just let him weaken this entire yep. Especially king since side you have this. at that point. Yeah, the only reason I would say he might want to do this is so he has a square for his bishop. Square for his bishop. But of course, you could take and double up his pawns, and then he has no place to castle. He doesn't. He's not going to want to castle this side, and he's not going to want to castle here, per, um, per chance. So you could just take. But yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, this is interesting because now show me the weak squares. Are there any weak squares? Ah, yes, that. And this one is not weak and yet. This, one, this one's temporary because yes. you can play here. So it's not really. But this one is the, not the, the really thought, a weak square. It's a nice outpost. Yes, the thought I had is a temporary outpost, is if he comes here, you can play back and hit the bishop then, and then he just weakened all the dark squares. Very good. Right, and you said it right. You'd have weakened dark squares, yes. So this is an immediate weak square. This is a potential weak square. Uh, since you have a knight that has to leave anyway, why not put it in this one, right? That's, that's like a no-brainer almost. It's like a free move. I uh, remember we said don't, um, you want to, make your game as easy as possible you want to make his game as difficult as possible he did the third one i told you about he helped you improve your knight your knight was nice it's in the center but he just gave you a chance to improve that knight at the same time then you're going to be able to improve this knight and you don't even have yeah, to probably, take he, first because should have played you should have played there i would have played like this okay. we shouldn't have again no structure or whatever here yeah yeah you could have played there uh, you might have to have worried about you pushing, and then you'd have to he'd have to take, and then you're opening up files. But I, I think it's okay. Yeah, I think you're fine. Interesting though. All right, so you grab the square. He puts the question to your bishop, and you take. Again, here you could have backed up because, like you said, you had nice squares to go to, and he would have destroyed his king side. But here you're hoping to win a pawn if he takes with the queen, right? Uh. So I didn't see to take. Well, you can't. You don't win the pawn because of the bishop, right? Oh, but if you, I guess oh, you do. No, you're Sorry, right. the queen. You're the right. queen. You're the queen. No, the queen and them are there. Yeah, yeah. right. So. Yeah, you're um, right. But what you do do is make this a permanent outpost, like a, like that's an eternal knight here in the middle. This knight's gonna dictate the game. Yep, for a long time because this bishop can't help you, but he does have a knight to try to chase you away. But, yeah. All right, he takes with the queen. You get your uh, knight square that you wanted, and it looks like we're gonna castle queenside. He's threatening you knight, and what was that? Hung this oh, piece. it's a blunder. We give free candy. Yep. We give candy to the queen. Higher level players will take advantage of this. Yes, they will! <laughs> <laughs> I know right when I moved it, it probably should have been here. Oh, really? Where or else just let him take. I, I mean, I thought about just letting them take. Give me another square. Uh, you can go here. Okay, so again, you're under attack. You have options. You can run away. You can't take the piece, but that would have been an option. You can't interpose. You can't. Uh, you could defend it, right, and get this beautiful pawns up here. Annoying I did. Him. I did think of that afterwards, reviewing. Like, if you if you play here and just say yeah. if you take here, we're gonna do this and leave this knight. What I didn't want to do was get rid of this pawn. Like in my head, I kept thinking, don't get rid of this pawn because of this. Yeah. This, this is your this is your biggest advantage. You want to keep this. Okay. Ain't your buff. And then the other option is to run away. And you can retreat with style, as our friend Sudakas would say, um, right? Yep. Retreat with style. And the idea is that if you go here, you're helping keep this piece here forever. So yeah, I would have liked it here. I don't know why you were thinking here. I don't like it here. Yeah, I mean, th this makes more sense. It's more centered, too. 
Okay. Just even like the center principle, right? Yep. Yep. And and he didn't take your. <laughs> I like nope. how you said though. He, he, I like how you said better players would take advantage of that. <laughs> well, I saw it when I moved it and was like, ah, that's not good. Not good at all. Okay. Well, the only the only thing I did, the only thing I did have if he took though was you have the check and then the rook, right? Um. Let's see. Oh no, maybe not. I guess you could offer the tree. Trade. Now you're in check. Yeah. You're in check first. You can go here. Okay. Wonder if you can offer the queen, the queen trade. But that still and takes then, away everything take you just said. Yeah. Right? You no longer have that. Yeah. Skill. If he goes back, well, it's, yeah. Okay. Eh, well, if we're, we're well, expecting my, a better player to see this. A better yeah. player sees this. A better player will also see that there's still a fork looming. And he might even castle. Who knows? But anyway, okay. Uh, but he didn't see it. So tell me right like here, I'm not looking for just moves, but what do you, does something jump out at you as again, a standard uh, tactic that you should almost always do? Yeah, busy. So right away, I think my, my rook's the least developed piece. So activating this potentially. Well, as long move. as the rooks are and, talking, and as long as the rooks are talking, we're going to consider them developed. It is, you're not, it's not in as best square as possible square yeah. okay so yeah you active. Can, that's what said active like yeah you can you're improve trying, the activity of your rook i totally agree with you you're right you can improve the activity of your rook what else could you do you could Wait do a here. one move attack on the pawn what else could you do uh do 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 i guess you could start trying to break the center if you wanted like pushing this pawn or prepping right. it here so to here. i'm gonna give you a levy rosman um tip that i actually like um, I actually okay. like a lot of the IMs. So uh, one of them is you always see how the game changed, right? Yep. All right, so it's your move right here. How did the game change? From previous move to here. Right. I don't think a whole, I mean, the pawn structure didn't really change. To me, nothing changed a whole lot outside of we just traded off of a minor piece at this point. And I guess he's no longer per attacking yet yeah, these squares. He's now attacking down here. So, he's no longer hitting these squares. So one thing for you is, hey, my knight is feeling even safer. My knight's gonna sit safer. here forever. Okay, anything else change? The bishop can now come uh, out. The queen can now come out. Come out, yeah. Okay, anything else? Uh, two, 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 two. He's got an open file for a rook that he can try to play for. But that didn't change that's by him moving the knight. Change. Knight, that's true. But it did stop this square. Okay, so that's one. That's the first thing we do, see how the game changed, how the position changed. Step two, we look for checks. You went, um, and actually you did it after this, right? Um, so it should be here. Um, here uh, but here you said, oh, I could castle. I could get my king to safety, get out of this check. Okay, so that's the first thought you had, I think. Um, later we were talking about, can I improve the rook? Can I um, you know, do a one move attack? Um, but he says what you should be doing is, and he doesn't even do the how did the position change. That's me. He says what you should be doing is checks, captures, and attacks, threats. And I don't do threats because if you look at how the position changed, you're supposed to be identifying threats. When you looked at the position change, like the knight could come here and try to push my good knight away. Right. Yeah. That percent, this is, move, this yeah. move makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. That like a pro. Yep. Take this outpost away. Take the check away. Very good. Very good. So this prophylactically would have been a very nice move. What else do you notice though? We didn't do checks. Do you have any checks? The only check you have a check right here and right here. Or sorry, here and here. Right. There and there. And here. Any of those uh, are feasible? Because the knight, you just lose the knight. Uh, the bishop's the most likely. And what check happens if you throw check. that check at him? Uh, he has. Does he have to protect with the queen? I guess he doesn't. Yeah, no, he does, doesn't he? Pretty sure he has to protect with the queen at that point, right? Or defend with the queen. Attack with the queen. Yeah. He has to attack with the queen, right? Which means? It's the best move, the most forcing move. Yeah, I mean, what happens if you if you did that check? 
I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's game. It's game over, really. Or yeah. Should be. Yeah, and 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 all it took was here not rushing, not rushing the castle, not rushing to castle, realizing the knight is no longer able to come here and block. Remember, the knight was able to block. Remember, I said, how did the position change? Change, yeah. You said, hey, no big change. You said, eh, nothing important. Yes, important. He could block the check. Because if that knight wasn't here, if you just said to yourself, you're looking at the game here, and you said, tag, if that knight wasn't there, my knight hits this square, my bishop could attack the king, his knight couldn't block, I'd win his queen. Right now, if that knight were here, or here, or here, or even here, I can win the queen. Right? If we're looking yep. ahead. And so therefore, if you say, oh, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take the bishop. Because if he takes with the pawn, it ruins his pawns. But if he takes with the knight, I want a queen. That would have been beautiful. Now, that would have been beautiful. You stumbled into it. You just figured, well, I gave away my knight. He didn't want my knight. Yeah, he said he didn't want the candy. <laughs> so I'm going to trade because I'm up. I'm going to trade. He took back with the knight. You still don't have to see it. You didn't. But then if you're always looking for checks. So if you go back to here and you say, I'm going to check for checks. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Takes me two seconds. I don't have any other checks. Two seconds. No checks. Right? He should have looked for, yep. imagine if he looked for checks first. He would have said, I could check here. Oh, that gives me a free piece. I can't, this isn't a check. I have no other checks. This is my only check and it's a free piece. I'm gonna do it. He would have found it if he looked for checks. Every move, you should take a moment and look for checks, captures, and attacks. Now, I like you to look at how the position changed. I'd say in a classic game, see how the position changed. I'd say in a blitz game or even a rapid game, just do your checks, captures, and attacks, and threats. So Levy's advice is probably solid, as is for Blitz and even Rapid, maybe. All right, so he missed the check. And then you, um, you, you actually took, he took back, and if you just looked for a check, and even if you had said, I don't know if I win the queen, I don't care. He can't castle if I check him, because he can't block me. He has no way to block my check. So if I say check, he can't castle. And you would have went, I'm doing the check. I do the check to, to gain a tempo so he can't castle and get his king to safety anytime fast, right? I want his king in the center. And then you would have stumbled upon him and said, oh, what? What? Huh? Because he would have done this or resigned. And you would have been like, well, that's a bad move. Why did he put his queen there? And then you would have said, oh, he had no choice. <laughs> ah, I want his queen. And then, then you'd be writing here in the notes, I planned this all along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he fell from my trap, my diabolical trap. I wouldn't have taken that much credit for it. Oh, okay. I would have been honest. I would have been humble about it. i like, you know, I didn't think I was going to win the queen. But it works out I did. Okay, and Busy says he wouldn't even have taken the queen. Busy says he would have played here. I have no idea why. Uh, busy, yeah, busy. You, you're you're a genius, and we're just mortal people here. We're just mortals, busy. Um, I I think is we're because, thinking, is it because of that. I guess Let him capture, recapture, check. Yeah, I guess. I guess. And then, and then he has, you to, take then he has to go stuff. here, right? And then you go here, and then you got meat there. I guess. I guess. I guess. I mean, this is still ugly for for um, right? Black really has no recourse. Game is over. But yeah, I guess Busy likes torturing people. Anyway, um, my daughter would say- He yeah, does, I've, I've, I've played him a few times. Oh, okay, because my, my daughter would say, no, 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 you gotta play with your food. Don't eat your candy so quickly, <laughs> play with it. Um, so yeah, Busy wouldn't even have taken, right? So this, but this was a good example of what Busy's saying though, would be, okay, I know I have a good move. Before I even do this Find move- a better one. Is there a better move, right? I mean, why not? You could check. You can check to see if there's a better move. I mean, maybe Busy would have done check this way. And then take the bishop this way so that you have to decide which one to take. And of course you want to take the knight because you don't want to lose the rook. And then maybe Busy would have said, ha ha, I get to keep my beautiful bishop. I don't know what he's thinking. 
No, it's okay. <coughs> All right, so, so, um, where I wanted you to talk, I, I want to teach you, but I think we'll just keep working on squares versus pieces, and we'll keep working on weak, what are actually weak squares versus undefended pieces. So that'll be our underlying theme for like months, because those are positional considerations. Weak squares are totally a positional concept. And until you stop giving away free candy, right? Free candy is like the number one thing to, for beginners to lose games. You can't give away free candy. And the ugly game we we looked at was a lot of free candy. This game was tons of free candy. Luckily, you were on the taking side of all the free candy. And this game, I don't. I mean, he offered free candy to begin with, but you didn't want to play into that. But then I think you also ended up with all these free pawns, right? So yeah, you still had free candy. So you think about it, all three of these games that you played recently, you won primarily because your opponent gave you free candy and didn't take it when you offered it. So you took it when offered and he didn't, or you just didn't offer it. So it's all free candy still. Now that's not to insult you, that's not to say, ah, yeah, we, you know, you're not ready. No, I'm just saying we could talk about the concept of weak pawns but um, weak pawns or weak squares, weak squares, undefended pawns, undefended pieces. But really, until you, one, get better at tactics and not giving away free candy, those should be our focus points to get you to the next level. So right now, what's your rating right now? 1730. I was like at 1750 or 1780, somewhere in that range. Okay, so you're... No, I lost a few. I lost is, a few and then won a few. Which is crazy to me that you could be in the 1700s um, and, and giving away free candy. Because over the board, you're not going to get any free candy from a 1400 and, and above. Right? 1400s will not give you free candy. What 1400s will give you is combinations to win free candy from you, but not flat out free candy. That makes sense. They're not going right. to drop free candy. Uh, so right now you're 1731, which is great. But I'm just saying, that's that to me, that's like 14, it's got to be like 1400 because you're still giving away free candy. But... Regardless, um, so you're playing 1,700 people, and they're giving you free candy left and right. All right. They don't so, like taking it either. And you don't, and they don't take it, and sometimes you don't, but they don't take it. So, but, but since we're still not finding checks, captures, and attacks, which is tactical, very tactical, usually for faster games, you already are working on analyzing the position. Right? Looking at how the position changed. And, and I just want you to identify, wait, wait, his knight was here, he was attacking these six squares. Now his knight is here, he's attacking these eight squares, or these six squares, or only these four squares. Um, okay, and what, what else? He was attacking the square, which means his knight can't move to one of those old six squares. Is that going to benefit me that he can't go there anymore? And by the way, now he could go to these new six or eight squares because of where he moved, is that gonna be a threat to me? And that's where the threat part of what Levy does comes in. Um, now, the benefit of doing the threats last, and I'll let you choose. The benefit of doing the threats last is it makes you more aggressive. So if you find that you're a passive player, then I'd say look for checks, captures, and attacks, and the last thing, look for threats, because it pushes it off to the side and makes you find aggressive winning moves first and so that you don't then because a passive player will look at how the position changed and go oh no he's attacking me and never get into the aggressive side right now it'll stop he won't look at the checks captures and attacks because he's too worried about the threats so if you look at the threats first sometimes it, it paralyzes you not you but in general um so if you think nah i'm aggressive I don't have a problem with that. I'm, I'm too aggressive sometimes. Then let's look at how the position changed, including threats, right? Where can he go? How can he hurt me? And then checks, captures, and attacks. Um, but in a speedy in a speedier game or in a game where you can look really quickly and go, well, that was just a bad move. You moved, you moved the queen. Remember the game where you moved the queen back to where it came from? Yep. You can go, yeah, okay, that didn't do anything. So I'm going to look for checks, captures, and attacks right away. But you need to find every possible check because even if the check loses a piece, 
Sometimes it's a brilliant sacrifice and you're going to have mate in three or four. But you won't find it if you say, oh, but if I take, I just, if I go check, he just takes me off. No, look a little deeper and make sure it doesn't work. So always look for checks, no matter how ridiculous they look, check for checks. And then I like to say, check for checks. And if you think you find a winning check, double check the check. So check for checks and then double check. Make sense? Yep. All right. Most forcing, forcing moves. You're the most forcing moves. Right? Forcing moves is another um, definite strong point. Um, checks are forcing moves. Captures are forcing moves. Attacks can be forcing moves. At least they you, you usually force a response of some kind. Remember the five choices. So that's why checks, captures, and attacks are yes, all primarily forcing moves. Threats or not. But the threats they make might be forcing moves to you. But by you looking at checks, captures, and attacks first, it still makes you look for that counterattack because remember, the counterattack is most of the time not the right answer, but the few times it is the right answer, it's a brilliant answer, right? It's like the answer the times it is the right answer. So we want to check for those to see if we have that possibility um, because then we don't we don't react to their attack. We counterattack and win the game, which we might miss otherwise. Makes sense. All right, good. All right, let's have a match. So I need someone to challenge Patro plus. Uh, we're going to make it casual because he's going to be doing some thinking out loud because what we're going to look for, Patrick, is I want you to check for checks, caps, and attacks every time. I, I will take it on myself as your coach teacher that um, I should have seen that the tactical, that, that we were leapfrogging tactical and getting right into positional, but you threw me off. You fooled me with your wisdom. You kept talking about weak pawns. Uh, well, I think, I think I know a lot more on positional and I try to, I don't know, I, I probably have a bad habit of trying to figure out the way to win a position or the advantage you have based on the position and miss the threat, right? Or miss the attack. Right. So the only bad part, what you said was that you missed anything because seeing, yeah. well, I know. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah seeing the positional battle. strengths and seeing the positional advantages, nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. But, but, um, while I don't believe the game is 99% tactical, although some people say that, I will, I will argue that tactics come first in your development and also in your thinking. So tactics make the game easy, make it easier for you. So we want you to find tactics first. First thing to do is look for tactics and tactics we mean forcing moves. So we're gonna check for checks, captures and attacks and threats. And then once we get really good at that and we don't miss those, then we will step up. Now, I'm, 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 I'm hoping free candy just takes care of itself. So, yeah. Right, because if I'm teaching your son, the first thing we're gonna do is teach him to identify free candy and never give it away. Be greedy with your candy. You, you, you worked hard to get that Halloween candy. Don't let dad, you know, take it at night when you're like in bed and he goes, no, I want something sweet. <laughs> so you, you, gotta, you gotta hoard your candy. So same thing on the chessboard. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna I already, I, I was skipping past tactics and going straight to positional because you kept talking, you, you fooled me, man. You kept talking about weak pawns, weak structures, uh, outposts, and you made me think, this, guy's a, this guy knows tactics, we're in a position now. So we're gonna back you up and we're gonna go backwards and let's check on tactics. And because at 2000 Lee Chess, all you need is tactics. So um, positional will give you gravy that when you get into those positions where there are no tactics, you're naturally, you're gonna be like, hey, this is back in my wheelhouse. I know this already. Um, you're kind of, remind me of me. When I was growing up, my dad did not teach me a lot of tactics. He taught me positional chess because that's what he played. And I was a very positional player even when I was playing and started playing in tournaments. And it did me well because my opponents had, were not positional at all. And luckily they weren't that great at tactics. Because if they were great at tactics, I wouldn't get a chance to worry about positions. But they weren't. So I, I was okay. You know, I, I survived long enough that I was, I was winning a lot of games because I saw things tact, uh, positionally that they had no clue. 
So I feel like you're, uh, you have the same situation where you're thinking positionally. I, I want you to think about squares, not pieces, but even that, keep doing it, put it on the side for today. Let's focus for the next couple of um, weeks on purely on checks, captures, attacks, and not missing any tactics or free candy. All right, chess kudo challenge you. Oh man, you got a tough match. You don't have an well, I easy got, match. I, Wizard did too. We got we got a rematch. I, yeah, take whichever one you want first. Um, chess kudo, I think, is higher rated, but chess chess wizard is the champion of the world right now. Oh, he backed it out. Yeah, chess kudo says uh, it is unwise to have a great looking strategical position. At the cost of your queen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, that was a paraphrase, Chess Kudo. That was a paraphrase. All right, so I see Patrick. I see Patrick, and I see Chess Kudo. Chess Kudo has white. Yeah, twenty-two fifty-eight. All right, but that's okay because we're gonna check for checks, captures, and attacks. So here it's always nice if you know theory, but let's say you have no clue about theory, so then you just figure out what to do. I like playing this open usually. So up to this point, I'm happy because what? You've been developing, you haven't given away any free candy. Life is good. Hey, we've not hung anything yet. You, you just played equal to 2258. Ask him if he wants a draw. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Offer it now. Yeah, right? Offer him a draw. <laughs> it's an equal position. Yeah, yeah usually in Chess Kudo, we try to find somebody near his rating so that, you know, he can practice the things we taught. All right, slow down now. Definitely slow down now. And you need to go through your analysis for how the position changed, check for checks, captures, and attacks, and threats. So no no checks currently. Um, that's easy attacks. I mean, what I kind of know theory-wise here is you can try to play the marshal and play d5 here. But I like playing the Lopez too, so what I do know theory is the line is to try and get this take take and then exchange this bishop or these rooks off and open up this file for white. Okay. So if you and know if you theory, push so here, if you push here, if you push here, you're permanently weakening your queen side. So the fun part about theory, this is where I like theory. I, I, I never propose that you spend a lot of time memorizing lines, but the benefit or the nicety of theory is you don't have to waste moments in a game like this where you have only 10 minutes. Um, thinking about moves that are in book. So as long as you're in theory and you know the theory is good for your side of this line, then you could just play them, right? But then once you, as soon as you start feeling yourself out of theory is when you have to really do the analysis. So go ahead and play whatever you want. Yep, I'm gonna assume he knows this a little better than don't, me. Don't, no, okay, so um, stop, stop, stop. One thing I, I don't want you to do is play the person. Play the board. Yep, okay. I don't care what they're rated, how much they should know about anything, play the board, because you're not going to learn by worrying over, well, I, he knows theory better than I do. Um, yeah, if he does, he does. Don't worry about it. Play what you believe is the right moves based on your theory, then play. Don't don't try something altogether new because you think he might know the theory better than you. That's just that's yep, a, so that's a attacks, recipe like, for disaster. You can, you can go here and try and harass this bishop and make him put him to the test. I guess at that point, right? Of course, we can't see your lines, but that's okay. Yeah, You're... well, you can play knight a, a5. Okay, this yeah, play whatever you want. Kind of sticks, just... out, sticks out to me, but you're moving the knight twice is what sucks, right, at the opening. I guess he moved a pawn now, technically, or pushed a pawn when he should have moved a piece. Play here. Okay. The idea that we can just tra trade off these rooks if we have to, if he wants to exchange over there. So we want to finish 
development, so we want to get the queen out of here. So, no checks. Captures. That's an attack. One, two, two, three. I think that's the only attack outside of taking here, which doesn't seem good. And by the way, we're going to go over this game after you're done, so no worries. That's fine. You're moving pretty quick, by the way. Just saying, you seem to be moving pretty quick. Here. So I gotta move this knight somewhere. And it's really do I wanna move it forward? Do you have to move it? Take take. Uh he's attacking right here. I don't know if I have a counter attack yet. I don't have anything that I can attack with higher value at that. So, did you check for checks, captures, and attacks before threats? Uh, so there is no, there is no checks, right? Right Good. now, there's no, there's no exact captures. You do have attacks or threats, I guess you would say, simultaneously of knight here or here. To attack over here attacks the bishop and gets him out of trouble. It does put him on the edge of the board, which kind of sucks, and it also allows him to have two attackers here. Right. I like moving them forward here. All right, good. We're gonna, we're gonna, if we're gonna exchange them off, like but that's the way I want you to off, think. Only put one attacker here. Yeah, but that's the way I want you to think through it, right? Checks, captures, also, attacks. Look for all of those options. Also gives us two attackers on the D, the D5 pawn now. Mm-hmm. You had two attacks before. Actually, three, three, actually. Yeah. So you could have just taken that last move, couldn't you? Uh, the knight was blocking the, the bishop. Yeah, but your queen and your other knight weren't being blocked. My queen and knight were there, yeah. So you could have taken that last move. Taken it here. I don't know what here means, but knight could have taken d5. Yeah, yeah, right? sorry. Yeah, yeah, I forget you can't see the arrows. Yeah, so you could have taken that last move, is my point. Okay. Weakens this. He weakens D3 and now attacks E5 and reinforces D5. All right, we have a check here, check here. Good job. You remember to look for checks. I we think I will count here. that as it. We'll count that as a success. It's a success. Okay. Yeah, you, you're checking for a check. I mean, you're checking for a check, so I'm happy. Well, so, so to me, you have, you can try to exchange knights off, develops his queen, right? Yeah. Not gonna, he's not gonna take with a pawn. You can take the bishop, which that bishop just seems like it's not very great anyways right now. But that also, right, that's right. This bishop doesn't look threatening. So why, why it, trade off a good knight for this bishop? And it develops his queen also. Yeah, I do kind of potentially like the attack of bishop to b4 and hit this rook. I guess he probably blocks with the knight then. Does he? Knight two. What other choices does he have if he gets attacked? He can try to trade off the dark squared bishop so he can block with bishop d2 or knight. And what else could he do knight besides... besides... Yeah, I mean, he can, move, he can move the rook as well. And where could he move it to? He can move it only to f1. No, or not, he can true. move it forward. Sorry, sorry, sorry. He can go forward. So he can come down and take on c5. e5, yes. Or e5, sorry. Right. So would that be so good or bad? So he's got two attackers on e5. And you have nobody defending. So if you attacked his rook, could he just take your knight? I mean, could he just take the pawn? He could just take the pawn. 
Okay. So you have to decide if that's something you want to have happen because you would have helped them win your pawn faster. Definitely would have helped them win the pawn faster. I guess at that point, okay, so looking at it that way, you can take the knight here first, which then he has to move. The, he's going to take with the queen, and then you can defend here and you remove one of the attackers. Are you going to defend it? Are you going to do something else? Because are you still looking at what the pawn c4 did? How did the pawn c4 change the position? You were checking that still, right? Uh, well, pawn c4 now no longer attacks b3 and b3, right? But it does attack d5 and okay. it attacks know. the b5. It attacks the b5 pawn as well. Okay. So those are the considerations. His main, his, main, his main threat to me right now, it seems to be, is this double attack on, on e5, though. Yep. Yep. So Which so I, I so this is the kind of thinking that you need to do. And of course, like I've said many times, um, the key is we have to be able to do it faster. Faster, right? Right, because he's so you giving you time. You can push this pawn, I guess. Yep. You can push this pawn, and it's always I think it's always harder when you're talking. You can push this pawn. Which, Which, pawn? Which still gives you. You still run into two attackers. I was trying to see if you can push the e, the e5 pawn, but you still okay. run into two attackers. And nothing is protecting but, your knight afterwards because the position would change to the point where e5 changed. is no longer protecting d4. Protected. So yeah. how does the position change if you push the pawn? You lose the defender. Defender, yeah. And he so, gets a free piece. You can defend this pawn. Well, two attackers right now. I think I'm going to take. Okay, we'll go for it. I don't it. like this, but I, th I think I think taking kind of makes sense right now. Okay, what's next? Okay, then we want to move this bishop here. I don't know if I want to move the bishop there, actually. I could move the knight. I could move the rook over. And if he does take with the rook, you can attack the rook with the bishop and have the rook attacking it at the same time. You know, like, I guess I consider rook e8 as a move right now. Um, this pawn's under attack, too, on b5. Mm -hmm. You have two pawns under attack. Back. Neither yeah. one is protected, and you're thinking about a rook move that doesn't fix either pawn. Well, my, my rook move idea was that if you, you're kind of defending through the bishop if you go e8, right? So if he comes down and takes... Okay, let's um, say he takes e5. E, e5, you can play bishop to um, bishop to d6. Okay, and then he plays rook takes rook? Yeah, and then you can just play queen takes rook. And what'd you get out of that? Well, you, all, you also then have a... You also will... I guess what you're gaining out of this is you're getting rid of the attacker. I guess you're losing the pawn, but you're trying to gain an attack on the... You have a potential check on h2. Right. Eventually. Up over there. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. I don't like giving away free candy personally. I think it's a bad idea. I don't idea. like giving away there. We'll Especially def against so a guy that's it. like uh, 500, what is he, like 800 points? No. 100 points higher. Whatever he is. You're playing the board anyway. I don't like giving away free candy to anyone. If you bring the bishop to b4, he just moves, right? Or defends. Or attacks. So he could attack with bishop b d2 you can block it with knight c3 so you're really kind of helping them all right we'll go bishop to d6 right now it's probably gonna take if 
you just take take this pawn right develop this rook to help protect this pawn I like this I like getting this rook into the game to at least okay. help protect here I mean if he wants to trade off on f6 it doesn't seem like it's beneficial for his attack okay why get rid of the queen why get the queen off the board for white yeah, I think you definitely are in a playable position you notice he hasn't bothered to take your b5 pawn because it just makes a terrible pawn structure that he does uh, that he doesn't want to deal with yet yep and now i think you can are you looking for checks captures this? and attacks yeah no no uh no checks you have attacks on his side of the board as bishop b4 right attacks this knight yeah she has to do something about it at that point then. Right? Mm -hmm. Where can he move it to? Well, he has a bishop protecting it, but it still does pin but it. It pins it, yeah. I guess you could try and neutralize this bishop now. I guess you ask the bishop. I kind of want to ask the bishop what he wants to do, right? I guess h6. Then he's just going to go back to h4. So I trade it. I guess you could try to break the pin by bringing the bishop back, but then it seems kind of wasted that you moved it to d6. Yeah, I, I think b4 would at least be an aggressive for um, attacking, right? Flavor. Yeah, that seems like the most aggressive move. And outside. then it frees up the queen. Then it frees up your square for your uh, queen if you want to get out of the queen. pin. Out of the pin. Yeah. That makes the most sense right here. Line this start. Up. Also wondering if you can start, if you can push c6 and make him push this d pawn. Well, I don't think you could. I don't think you could push c6 right well, now. Can't you just take it? Isn't it just free? You can. Oh, okay. But it kind of gives you. Well, I mean, I'm just. You're, you're trying to. Line, I guess what I was trying to line up was the idea that you got this. You're getting this bishop lined up on the queen. It already is now. lined up on the queen, my friend. It is. I know. I want this. I want this pawn to move though. Right, so, but that means the pawn can't take back on e6. Back on c6. So e6 is available. That's all that means to me. That the e6 square is currently available. That's all I see out of that. And then you have to decide if there's something you could do with that square. And if not, then you don't worry about it for the moment. Now, of course, if your queen was on d6 and then you push c6, you might be able to make some hay that way because then your queen is holding c6 along with the bishop but yeah that's the way you got to think so cap checks captures and attacks still are what you need to spend time with right Just one. okay and what makes chess kudo a better player than you isn't that he sometimes some things he'll see better than you right and maybe he has like a better understanding of weak squares and things like that but at the basis level, at the basic level, like why is it 2,000 better than you? Because he sees what you see, but he sees it faster. Right? I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. He sees it faster. So what do you got now? Got the a free rook right now. Not a free rook, but you do have a rook, rook. for... I have a rook. So he's putting three attackers on F6 at this point. He's also stopping you from bringing the queen to d6 because this knight's now attacking d6. Mm -hmm. Which is also kind of stopping you from bringing the bishop back there, right? Mm -hmm. If you ever wanted to. So your captures here is on the rook. With bishop takes the rook. Is that your only capture? I guess, yeah, that's your only capture at the minute. Your other attacks at h6. So what happens if he takes, you take. Takes, you take. So I tell you, well, to me what seems happening or what you're kind of hurting right now is f6. You have three attackers. And I don't think there's any way to get three defenders here at this point. Well, 
maybe back, bishop back to, bishop back to e7. Yeah, the only way. if you decide it's a losing proposition otherwise, you might have to, right? Yeah, I mean, well, if you're forcing move-wise, like if he takes with the knight, it's check. Mm -hmm. you then it, if you take with the pawn, and then he takes with the bishop, he's just, it's that's a brutal, it's destroying your king's side at that point. Mm -hmm. And your queen's under attack. Back, yep. And then it's checkmate so in like a you, move or two. Yep. It looks like you have to defend here. Okay. That's, and that's what you have to determine, right? So that's seeing the threats, and that's why if you did the threats last, and you said check, captures, attacks, you said, oh, I got a free rook. That's what a lot of beginners would do, is just take the free rook without calculating the threats. And so I have no problem with the threats coming first in the sense of how did the game change? Like you said, you had three pieces attacking your knight. Yeah, what are, what are his attacks, right? His, yeah. his forcing moves. And yours. Which now at least gets us even the trade off there if that's what he wants to do. I mean, I am. Good job, Montague. Much better. I'm much happier that you did that first. Yeah, no, Cheskuri doesn't have to take back um, at all, right? But he's in. if you take with the knight first and he's in check. You're gonna win the rook, or he's got to right? Because you got to either move your king, you're in check. So if you didn't take back, you'd lose your rook. And if you lose your rook, then it's you're you're back the rook that you had won. So it would have been interesting. Now what I want to weigh out is, can you take with the G pawn? Move your king and then try to play with the rook on E. You and definitely you can. You just got to decide which way is better, right? Better, yeah. Which seems like it holds at the current second. Yeah, but what I happens when the dust clears, right? Oh, you mean yeah, taking with the either. pawn, yeah. I, I think you almost... Yeah, well, I don't, I don't think you can afford to trade off the queens because then he takes your b5 pawn and he's got a lot of pawns over there. Yeah, well, if you take with the g pawn, you also reinforce or, or attack. You got an extra attacker to e5, right? So now this rook's no longer having to defend e5. You're kind of freeing it up. We'll no, Montague here. wasn't a Scandi, that's for sure. Yeah, I think this is definitely better for you than uh, taking with the queen. The I think queen, taking yeah. with the queen is a quick loss endgame. Yes, he does. Be very useful at this time, huh? Yeah. Well, and for him, he's got. Oh, I think you just keep trying to slow. Go queen d6. Ratchet, been there, done that. I'm 60, buddy. I did the poor student, did the poor married couple. 
I did all that. Well, and if you can't attack there, try to set up an attack, right? So, okay. I don't know. I, 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 I get a feeling for what he's aiming for, and I'm just curious to see if uh, if he's doing what I think he's doing and what you're going to have to do, and yeah. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. I'll try and get this bishop alignment up. Oh yeah, he's one move away now. So I was I was looking at bishop to b7 for you last move, so then reposition to c8. Um, yeah, try and, and get this and or, this king, and or king to h8, and then sliding your rook over to um, g8. The g. Yeah, to get on the open g file. And that's what I was thinking was ha was going to happen. Uh, now I think you have issues. There's there's definitely uh, no I don't know. I was still gonna say it. there's definitely ways around it, but I don't know if there's a way to stop it. But not that's fast. You need to do it with speed. Well, he doesn't have really checkmate threats though. You can run. So I think you can counterattack. I like. Yeah, why not? Why not? He says. Right? I mean, might as well be active. And remember, it's not going to be checkmate. Yeah, because you can. The king's king's got x six squares. F, you know, yeah. f eight, e seven. <laughs> yeah, busy. I know. Yeah, 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 busy. I know. Because he's like, I like that move like two or three moves ago when the bishop was still on oh, the, uh, the, the queen. Yeah, well, yeah. I saw it last move. Like, if I would have put this queen here, you were double attacking the rook and the queen. Or the rook and the bishop, sorry. Yep, that's what Busy saw a while back. Probably. But that required you putting the queen on d3, d6 instead of the bishop on d6. Early, much earlier. All right, good night, chess wizard. Good night, my friend. Hey, at least you're making them Little think. Race at, that point. at least you made them think, right? It's funny how we think that's an achievement. Yeah, at least I made them think. You made, made them think about it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I made them think. But he, his plan wasn't as wasn't as solid. I made them think. Uh, he's still got a winning position. Uh, you can't do a, a, a prediction on this game. Uh, come on, Chess Kudo's giving him, like... Five minutes back and more. Yeah, it's just a it's a training game. You, you can't do predictions on who wins a training game. That's terrible. I mean, you can. It doesn't count for anything. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> terrible. Theoretically, the rating does that for you. Oh, these guys, I don't know. Now, I was thinking there was an interesting uh, facet, right? If you go king to g7 so that you don't drop the f pawn and you wait till he takes on h7 to move your king to f8, you don't lose the f pawn, right? And then eventually your king can go to e7, e7. to protect, to protect f6. 
So I, I, it felt like, and I don't know, it feels like if you go king to g7, you get to um, protect the pawns for the moment. The when he pushes his pawn, um, I would just take it. And then if he takes your pawn, then you go to f8 with an eye to going to um, f uh, to e7 after that. Now, I don't know if that's good, but that's my thought. Yeah, my other, yeah. If you do, yeah, if you move it to F8 now, you drop the F6 pawn. Yeah. Don't know if I have anything else at the second. We'll go was, with this. I mean, um, you know, Kudo's nice enough to do a training game with you. So usually I let you play without them giving you time and just make you play and I don't even talk to you. And then afterwards, like I, w I would mute myself and you don't have to talk. I'd commentate on your game, but then afterwards we'd go over what you missed and what you did as far as the principles we were talking about, which was checks, captures, and attacks. But we could do that. You could do that. You know, play another game later. Yeah. I always think it's harder. It's harder to, uh, like when people stream, I don't know how they do it streaming. I think it's hard to talk about everything you're trying to view out loud. Yes. Oh, it's extremely hard. The ones that can and, do it. And look for it, right? Because you're. <laughs> Yeah. You're busy talking about it, and then you're, you're you know you start talking about something, and then you miss something else because you're distracted about what you're talking about. It is amazing the ones that can do it without a problem. So you see, yeah, see now we get interesting, right? So now you got to decide how you want to play that. Like what happens now, and can you can you take the uh, the uh, C? If you took the C pawn, he takes back. You could take back, but then he gets to take your pawn. You get to slide away, and it gets it gets very interesting. Yeah, my first thing was exchanging this B, the C pawn. I thought about so take, take, take. And then you're hitting on the bishop for the time being. Yeah, which he, so which he could chase it makes it a little bishop, interesting right? with the queen. It makes it totally he interesting. What to do with the queen. My other thought was trying to get this C, this bishop off of this diagonal or off of this A8 square. Yeah, which taking all those pawns would. Yeah, I, I, probably, like I probably take the I, I like pawn. exchanging because it was my original thought. Just in the position to do this and this. And then give you this this battery ram that you were going to get anyways and walk the king back one way. Yep, so he took away your the mate threat. That's, that's what the uh, H6 was for. There was a mate threat on the back rank. Which was good and sneaky on your part and his part, whosoever's part you want to make it. But yeah, I'm I'm liking. Uh, you have you have play now at least. You have multiple ways yep. you could take. I think. I know which way Bishop I would. Takes. I know what I would do. Kind of like Bishop takes. Pawn. So you take here. Dot, where have you been? Where have you? Oh, and thanks so much, G Dot. Oh my gosh, look at this now. People like we don't even know are getting. Um, hey, like chess was a chess kind of sub. So just so you know, I would have probably taken the D pawn and had my dual pawns there to cut off the bishop next move. Was bishop right here. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what I would have done. Yeah, but I didn't want yeah. to tell you. I wanted then, you to play. And then do this. Yeah. I wanted you to do it on your own. I wanted you to play whatever you want to play. Oh man, G Dot, that is so I, nice. I thought of that and thought that it opens up the rook too, and that you potentially can trade the rooks off then in the back ring. Well, now you're forced to move. I don't know what you're waiting on. It's a forced to move. I'm sorry. Yeah, you have no choice, so. Yep. I was looking back. I was back at the. Uh, previous move. I guess though, if you had taken, yeah, no, I think my move was, yeah, I think pawn takes pawn would have been. Yeah, good. I think pawn take, yep. E takes d4, e5 takes d4. I've been doing great, G dot. Missed you though. I was thinking about you the other day. Oh, okay. Hey, totally understandable, my friend. Totally understandable. Yeah, totally like taking the pawn instead. Yeah, no doubt in my mind. Oh, 
Yeah, I guess you couldn't take the form. Duh. Now what? Can't take the pawn now because you dropped your bishop. See? Ah, man, I would have liked that other take would have been so sweet. Yeah, about the time. So you do have moves though. You just gotta look. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna attack those bishops. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Attack! And, One and down. And come back attack! And, try, and come back and try and grab this pawn. So you're either gonna. I don't know if you're coming back and grabbing much, but attack! We like attack. I'm thinking you can, if he, if you save the bishop, right, you can come back and grab this d-pawn now. If you say, oh yeah, you could take the d-pawn with your queen. I was, I was thinking with the pawn, but of course he doesn't have to. Yeah, because otherwise he has to give up the, it gets very complicated. Oh, great. Yeah, and I've tried to save the best ones. I make highlights of the best ones so they'll stay on there forever. And I do try to re. I, I've been. I started doing reruns. That was different. I hadn't ever thought of doing reruns before. Um, but yeah. Oh, look at him! Clever, finding ways to uh, try to save the bishop. This is. This is. This is. Oh, okay. He says, "I'll go over here." Look at this. I'm not talking anymore. No, I'm not. I'm not helping anymore. You guys are down to the You're end. You're fine. Because yeah, it's getting... almost quitting time. Yeah, I'm glad you were able to at least watch the reruns. Um, like I said, I got highlights out there. I'm gonna run some more reruns for you guys. I like running rerunning the lessons, and um, yeah, basically the lessons. The tournaments, eh? Championship match, yeah. But besides the championship match with the great commentary, uh, other than that one. I, I, I don't know. I, I like uh, I like mostly the. If I'm gonna do a rerun, it should. I, I'm thinking it should be the other issues, other things. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like about. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's cute. That's cute. Nice. See, you're looking for attacks. You found an attack. Great job. Great job. Check captures and attacks. You found an attack. Yeah. Now it's, now it's messy, kind of. I mean, I guess it's been kind of messy. It has been. Guaranteed, it's been messy. And it's just getting... It's getting... It might even get messier. I've almost gotten to the point where I like your position. Yep. Now, now I kind of debate, do you take this deep on and just get rid of it? I... Okay, I'm not going to say anything. You can anything. attack, I know, you can attack the queen with F. Or rook to, you got rook left and attack the queen. Really? I wasn't thinking of that. I don't know if he, he wants to run away okay, too. That could be go really dangerous. H. You can go H, come down. Yeah. Yep, I think you're right, just take the deep one. I, I try to rerun Deep most run. of the lessons, yes. Hey, Flavio, I didn't even know you were in the house, Flavio. You were so quiet. Didn't even know you were in the house, my friend. Yeah, I'm trying not to help anymore because it's they're down to like equal time and I gotta go to bed anyway. But again, check captures and attacks. I think next. we're I think that's where you need to focus the next two weeks on. Or the next two whatever days, weeks, thoughts. Months, years. Yep. I'm not gonna say anything, I'm just watching. Yep. Yeah. But you're down to 33 seconds. I will tell you that much. So I, I liked uh, bishop to e6. 
Your rook had beautiful. I thought, pawns, I thought so pawn c6 too, kind of. No, nah, pawn c6 from... runs into rook to uh, d8. I mean, d1. Runs into rook to d1. If you uh, uh, yeah, move yeah. your queen, then he takes the bishop because uh, you can't let it. It just gets messy. But um, but yeah, I loved your rook's alignment. I didn't want you to move it. It was beautifully aligned. Why move it? Now you're back to messy again. We are back to messy. Yep, yep. But that's why I didn't want to say anything. I, I, I figure Kudo has been nice enough to let us team up on him all this time. Oh, I guess that's bad. Yeah. Bad. He just takes. Yeah, but it's not over. It's not over. You're still in it for a moment. But you for gotta a move. Moment, you yeah. got 10 seconds. Yeah, you only have like one legal move, so you wasted 10 seconds on the only legal move. You better start thinking about your next legal move. Go. Gotta move. Oh no. Oh, that was bad. That was really she bad. Was taken up. Yeah, uh, I knew the uh, with quick time. That's yeah. bad. So bishop to d3. 15, I knew, I knew the bishops lined up with that. You can't exchange there. If you yeah. exchange there, it's bad. Bishop right. to d3 would have kept you in the game. d3. Yeah, bishop to d3 blocking the rook. Do you see it? Yeah, right here. Yeah, bishop to d3 would have blocked the rook and kept you in the game longer. And then you still have chances. But yeah, you, the big one was there was no reason to move that rook off the uh, G file. That rook was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah, I think you just move your bishop to uh, E6 here. Um, and you're looking a lot going better. Back. I'm going back to it. On... Yeah, it's on move 30. I'll move 30. You should, bishop to E6, I think, was good. He was saying after though. queen f5. Is he saying yeah. rook to a e4? No. After, after or bishop to, bishop to e4 is what he's saying, which is what I thought no. too to align him up. I'm looking at bishop to e6. But yeah, bishop to uh, bishop to e4 is good too, right? It kind of like, where's your queen going? Where can yeah, but if you went go? bishop e4 on 30, then he just plays queen to d7 check. Not with your queen there. Oh, I guess, yeah, the queen is there. That's right, it's protecting. Yeah. The queen gets uncovered. Yep, your queen gets yep. uncovered. That's nice. I mean, really... I, I mean, did think of that not as a defense earlier, but I did think of it as an attacking move. And his, and his queen can't go to h7 to harass your rook either. So then his only, legal, his only move to save his queen is to go to h5, or he could play rook to d1 to try to trade off but then you, you, you still go down a rook or bishop. Um, and actually you just lose the rook. Because you just take the bishop takes and your bishop takes the queen you can't even take back. So yeah, if you went if you went from here, that is pretty. Bishop to e4, then your then queen to h5 um, is like the only move. Yeah, that's and then you lose the rook, right? Then he takes. Then you, then you take his rook. Yeah, that's what he said. You had me on e4. Yeah, bishop queen e4 bishop to e4. Yeah, I was thinking bishop to e6, but bishop to e4 works. I was fantasizing the same thing you were. I was thinking if I move the bishop to e4, um, forking the rook and the um, queen. I was thinking, oh, but then his queen comes to d7 and I'm messed Seven, up. Seven, but it's per but, yeah, but you're protecting it with moving the bishop. Yeah, yeah. So my original thought on the rook moves is it's no longer doing anything. I guess it is. It's putting pressure. Yeah. I just figure it's blocked off. You're never sacking it. I could never see a time I was sacking it for for this pawn. Yeah, no, you had a great game. Now, a lot of time was given back. 
I, I kind of give you hints and thoughts uh, every once in a while. But basically, if you can go faster and do checks, captures, and attacks, captures, attacks. you could find all those. Now, again, you're not going to be playing 2258 players all the time. You're going to be playing people more close to your rating, so you don't have to be as fast as a 2258. You just have to be a little bit faster than the other guys. But right now, you don't even have to be faster. You just have to make sure you're checking for checks, captures, and attacks because they're not doing that. Obviously, right? I mean, you're not doing it a lot. You're not doing it consistently. Uh, yeah. They're not doing it consistently. So your next step up to be above them is to identify every move, checks, captures, and attacks, and threats. And again, it doesn't have to be threats. It could be how the position changed. I like how the position changed because how the position changed also tells you what's available for you. So when you're thinking checks, captures, and attacks, that's very aggressive forward thinking, right? Attacking, um, forcing moves. And then you're thinking of threats. That's just what they're trying to do to you. You might, I think you do miss, I think we will miss opportunities that how the position changes affords us. So I like it that you notice things like, oh, this pawn moves to, to A4. So, uh, so therefore, you know, B3 is no longer protected by the pawn. Yeah. I think it's worth it to be able to identify those. Got to be able to do it quickly. But it's good to identify those. But for right now, I think, yeah, let's focus your next week or so. Fully focus. Let's stay focused on checks, captures, and attacks, and then threats and or how the position changed. Um, but let's make sure we're not missing any checks, captures, or attacks. Attacks. All right, let's start with that. Yeah, I haven't, yep. Put it this on was a, interesting, like the line the line he played in this Lopez is interesting. Yeah, see, but now you can go back of, and look I haven't up. played a lot of people outside of higher rated people that know to push this A pawn, like that that A pawn push is good. Okay, oh well, yeah, so you could look it up and see what, you know, the book says and maybe next time say, okay, I know what I'll do next time, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you're not memorizing reams of lines. You're just saying, hey, I, I want to know at least what the book says I should have done, and then, ooh, look. You know, it's always fun as you go, hey, I found one of the book moves. Hey, that's nice. You know, oh, I'm still in book. I'm still in book. Ah, you know, that's always nice. Uh, let's see. He said, after he played, after I played D3, D, okay, after he played, he said when he played D3, after he played D3, yeah. the E5 pawn, yes. His, your e5 pawn is hanging because you no longer could take back here, right? If you take here, you take, he could take here, and then your queen doesn't have a way to attack both the pawn and this one. So usually what happens... Sorry. Are you in the study? No. Let me put it in the study real quick, and then i got to get some sleep. So I will put it in the Patroclus study, and here we go. And he said it, and he's right. It's a good one to remember. So right here, are you in the Patroclus study with me? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it. Okay, good. So the idea behind this one is if he takes and then he takes here, you can yeah, use you, the one I know. is play this. Just, yeah, sorry, you play go queen ahead. to d4. Yeah, that's that's the one I'm used to because then you, you're going to win back the pawn. Now, you could probably just take it back with the knight too, but I think then you fall into the Alakine kind of problems. But yeah, so you can win back the pawn. So he's saying that after, in this open, after this move, which I would assume would also be the knight move would do the same thing, um, you know. But because this protects the pawn, now he's threatening to take. And if you take back, right? So let's say, well, what you did. He said that he could have taken here because now you don't, this move doesn't win the pawn because he just moves his knight back. Okay. Yeah, so you have to play B6 or B5 before that. Oh, yeah, but right, right. So normally in the Royal Lopez, it would be, yes, now you would chase the e5, bishop. B5 here, then bishop. Then you can play bishop E7. Well, right, yeah, because the knights. Right. And, and right, because that's the marshal, the marshal counterattacker. I don't know. Whatever it's called, I something don't like know. that. Yeah. Then you play d5, trying to get quick, trying to get active, because you're opening up the position. Yeah. Your bishop's already kind of developed your... on c. 
And check the chat when you get a chance. Chess Kudo showing you some other uh, lines that you could play, like with bishop to c5 first instead of bishop to e7. Um, I guess he was saying that you could do that trap back here. So, so if you don't want to play d, if you don't want to play this right away, he says you could do this. Um, I would presume because of the same thing, then now you're threatening checkmate for the knight. Yep. I saw this. You know what? I saw this line like a week ago, too. Somebody showed this to me. Okay. Playing this. Yeah. Were you so the threat checkmate there? I can't white, there. Def, white, can, white can refute it, though, right? Like, isn't doesn't white... Well, I, I think white just doesn't have to take. Have to take, yeah, is the deal. I mean, if he just castles, then now he's threatening to win the pawn still. And 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 I agree. I guess you just played you played d6, right? That's yeah, and, and chess kudo says I agree too. He says it uh, protects this pawn tactically through what we just said, and this is a much more active position for the bishop than here. Yeah, I didn't like the bishop here per se. We talked, right? We talked, we said, where can the bishop go? Where should he go? Um, this is definitely yeah. a better square. And what's not, a, a small nicety with this pawn here, you know you can tuck him away and stay tuck on this diagonal forever. So, yeah. I guess I played e7 knowing that there's some opening theory to e7 oh, and yeah. playing d5. I'm sure it's a, it's a, it's a... But I had to, I had to play b6 first, though, like you said. That's, that's where I screwed up, I think, in the... Yeah. Again, that's where you get back to, um, do I memorize lines? Memorize lines, yeah. Do I memorize lines, or do I learn the theory and principle behind the opening? Um, by the way, the best way for you to learn what Chess Kudo is pointing out is like you're doing right now in a game, because I, I don't consider this memorizing. I consider this like, okay, yeah, I played it, and I see, yeah, okay, I got to remember that this says that if I do all this, this isn't free anymore. Ah, Oh, but I could do this. Oh, that's a nice little trap. I like that, right? So then you re you're not memorizing like if he does this, I do this. If he does this, I do this. Not that kind I'll of memorization. That. Yep. So I like that better. Um, that, that and, it, and it sets up good alignment there with bishop c5. I mean, yep. black getting your bishop to c5 is usually good anyways is black. Yeah, it's a nice square for A lot of Italian, Italian king structures kind of deal. Yep, yep. Good. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely kudo. I know it's a book move. All right. What, Bishop C5? Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. That was a good lesson. Uh, checks, caption, and text. Definitely got to look for text. that. I will peek in at your games every once in a while. I'll look to see a game you've played after this and see if it looks like you're missing obvious checks, captures, or attacks. And I will and I will chastise you. <laughs> I'll, I will accept that. Okay, just just want to be upfront about it, right? I, I just want to be upfront about it. Wow, no, no I, I have it. My, my last my last lines: weak squares, undefended pieces or pawns, checks, captures, attacks. Excellent. Yes, undefended pieces we'll Excellent. get to. We'll definitely spend time with undefended pieces, and checks, captures, and attacks. I definitely want you to work on those. Uh, boy, every, all of our usual suspects. Not one other team streamer is streaming right now busy nobody is streaming right now that's on the team stream busy busy needs hey to you're welcome chess kudo chess kudo says thanks for the lesson <laughs> oh. it, it wasn't your lesson but you're welcome of course tell him tell him thank you i don't have your chat open right now yeah uh oh patrick says thank you thank you to you for playing him and uh i guess he's saying thank you for the lesson um, yeah, we could go with a random now. Play Lion Chess, by the way, was a guy played a lone wolf against. 23, he's uh, 2300 rapid. Yeah, he's kicking it. Nice guy, actually. Uh, pretty cool guy. I don't know if you've ever met him. I mean, it'd be nice to meet him. He's, he's a I've nice guy. I've seen him in chat. Okay, in my chat? I think so, right? Play Lion Chess? I don't think so. No, no, no. I thought I thought he was in here like a week ago. He was in there. Who knows? He might have been. Um, I do know that, like I said, I played him in a Lone Wolf 45-30-30 uh, game. I lost to him. Yeah, Daywind's not one of the team streamers either. But let me check out Daywind. I know. I definitely know you like Daywind. I think he just Dude, hasn't bothered to fill out the paperwork. Busy. Likes Daywind. No, uh, Sodakus. It's not that Busy doesn't like him. 
<laughs> Who's got 65 viewers? <laughs>